Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll be looking at how to configure zero tier on a Microtik device and generally just how to use zero tier, what it's for. So I hope you enjoy the lesson and I'll see you in the video. Alrighty, so before we jump into any setup, I just quickly want to talk about zero tier. And if I look at their website here with the documentation, which I will link in the comment, it says zero tier is a smart ethernet switch for planet earth, which is huge actually, because that makes me think, hey, we can connect a bunch of devices to the cloud and act as if they were on a switch. That is crazy. And there's so many uses that we can uh, combine that with. You could set up stuff like out of band uh, management networks. You could set up special type of routing or VPN connections. Like the possibilities are almost endless, to be honest. And I really love um, this idea. So zero tier in essence is a cloud based service that we can subscribe to. And it is free up to the first hundred or so devices that you add. And these devices can then connect to the cloud and communicate with each other as if they were on one network. That, that is really awesome to me. So, um, Without this documentation, I actually want to go over what we need to do with the Microtik. So let's jump to that portion. Okay, so let's talk about what we need on our Microtiks in order to run zero tier. So the first thing is you need to install a version seven on your Microtik. And currently version seven is still in beta. It's not out yet, which means this is all pretty much experimental and you can't just load this on any device. So with the software packages, um, you're going to have to download the extra package to get the zero tier package, but it's only available with the ARM software. So if I'm going to install this, I need to make sure I'm above version 7.1. RC2 is when they released this. So if you have a version seven beta below RC2, it will not work. And then you can just download the extra package. So you can just save the image and it will download onto your computer. And then once that has downloaded, you can actually um, just unzip the files and have a look and see what's going on. So let me just open this up so you can see, because in essence, the thing that you want is this zero tier package. And all that you need to do is you need to just save this, copy that to your Microtix file system, restart the device, and it will boot up with the zero tier image, but the zero tier we're mainly going to be configuring through the command line. So I'll show you that now. Okay, so from Microtik, I'm going to assume that you have imported the package and you can verify that the package is there by going to system uh, packages. And then you should see the zero tier package here. If this is here, it means it will work. If you don't have this, then none of the commands will work. So what we're going to do is just navigate to the terminal. First thing that you want to do is you want to set a the zero tier to be enabled so you can type zero tier enable and then if i do tab you'll see there's a zt1 and that is the default instance which you will want to enable so that the zero tier actually works on your microtech now that we've enabled zero tier we still need to add an interface so to do this we do zero tier interface add and if i question mark this we actually see there's stuff that's going to be very important to us because the first thing is the network. So the network is very important because this isn't like your network, like your subnet that you're going to be putting in a zero tier interface. This is your network ID that you're going to be getting from zero tier that you can configure, which the devices will use to connect to the cloud and form connectivity. Think of this almost like a pre-shared key on a VPN that users are going to use to authenticate. Uh, but instead of authenticate to each other, they're using an ID that we get from the zero tier cloud to connect. And we're going to set this up now by actually going into zero tier and then getting the network details. All right, so let's look at logging into zero tier. So what you're first going to do is you're going to sign up and you'll put in some email address details. You'll sign in, verify your email account. And it's as quick as that really. But I'm just going to log in since I've already got a zero tier account, uh, networkbird.com. And once I log in, you might see something like a network that's already been generated. And I'm just going to create a network. And it might just look like this. It has a random name. 
it gives you some subnet details there and there's the network ID. So that is the important bit that we are going to need to connect to. I'm just going to open this up to show you exactly what's happening in zero tier because your network ID is what the devices use to connect to when they connect to the cloud. The name, you can change that. You can make it whatever you want. I'll make this tmb-lab if I want or tmb space lab. And then I'll give it a description, my little lab. And then we get stuff like access control. So access control is actually very important because you can set it for private, which means an administrator on zero tier portal needs to approve or authorize any devices that's connecting, or you can set it to public, but that is definitely less secure, which means any device can just automatically be connected to your ID if they have the ID, but it's a security risk because if, if somebody that's not supposed to be able to connect, get your ID details, they'll be able to get onto the network. So I highly suggest leaving this on private. And here it asks you some stuff about managed routes. So this is pretty cool because you can inject routes to your clients to tell them how to get to different uh, subnets perhaps. And we'll play around with that a, li a little bit later in the video. But here we get our IPv4 auto assign. So we can set to auto assign or we can manually assign, but I'll put it for auto assign. We can put it on easy. And all that this means is the zero tier will automatically assign IP addresses to clients within this range, within this scope. So let me maybe make it 172.28. Uh, whatever. You can also do IPv6 auto assign if you so choose. And here are some rules and stuff that you can also play around with, but we're not going to make any changes with this. What we want to focus on is the members now, because currently no devices have joined this network. Use the zero tier one app on your devices to join. Here is my ID and it's the same ID that's at the very beginning. So I'm just going to copy this ID and then I'm going to navigate back to my Microtech. And then on my Microtech, my network, I'm just going to paste this in <laughs> and it's that simple. You also just need to specify an instance, which is the ZT1. And once I hit enter, I'll actually be connected to zero tier. So I'm just going to do a zero tier interface print. And what you'll see is it picks up, there's the interface that it's creating. There's the MAC address that it's created. There's my network. And the status is currently access denied. And the reason that's, and the reason that ha is happening is because of that access control. So I'll, let me just navigate back to zero tier. And if I refresh my page, I should actually see that member now. So it says um, there is a member, but you should at least have two devices for this to function properly, which is, which goes without saying, I think, but there is my member. There's the address for my member, the Mac address that I'm learning from them. I can give it a name. I can even assign an IP myself if I would like to, and I will like to do that. So I'm going to make it 172.28.0.1. And if I click on the plus, that's the IP address it will always assign to that machine. But what we need to do is since the private access control is set, we actually need to click on which members we want to authorize. So I'll just click on this and now this member will be authorized. Now it will be allowed to connect. Let me just go back to uh, my Winbox. And if I do a zero tier interface print, I can actually see the status is now okay. And it even tells me what the network name is. So that is awesome. I've actually now connected or integrated this Microtech to zero tier. It's part of the zero tier cloud, which is all software defined networking. This stuff is so cool, guys. I really love it. Now to actually reap the full benefits of this, we need to add another device. And for that, I'm just going to add my own uh, Windows computer. So let me just navigate to uh, my zero tier app that I downloaded and you can download this directly from zero tier on their website. Let me just uh, open the control panel and you'll see how straightforward this is. It tells you your zero tier address, your version, all that stuff, but all that you need is the network ID. So let me just copy that again, paste that in here, join the network. And there it tells me, hey, there's some stuff here. Uh, would you like the devices to be scannable? But I'm just going to say no. And if I look at the background, I can see the new device, which is my PC has been picked up. Let's just give the PC a static IP as well. But if you left that, it would just automatically get IP like the HCP. So let me make this dot two. 
and let's give it a name. Let me call this the PC and let me call this the router. And let's off this PC. So now that the PC has been offed as well, it'll pick up a few additional details. And now the real fun begins. So what I want to test is from my PC, can I actually ping 172.28.0.1, which is the zero tier management IP of the remote router. So let's see, that's awesome. I can ping that. Um, now let's see if I can actually connect to that device using Winbox. So let me open up Winbox, connect to 172.28.0.1. Uh, with my logging credentials and I'm on that router remotely via the zero tier interface. Think of this, it's it's like a VPN, but it's also not a VPN. It's more like VXLAN, if you, if you know what VXLAN is. But now my devices are actually able to communicate with each other. So if I added my phone, for example, also to the zero tier, I could connect to the MicroTik and manage it through my phone. This is really, really awesome stuff. Um, let's quickly do something fun. I'm going to create a bridge interface and let's just call the bridge interface LO0 and this is on the MicroTik. And what I'm going to do is add a private address, 192.168.50.1 um, slash 24 to the bridge. And now we're going to orchestrate some routing from the cloud from our zero tier. So let me go on to zero tier and let's add routing for that. So what I could do is I could say, I want to add routing for 192.168.50.0.24. And if people want to get there, they can get there by going to 172.280.1, which is the router's address. So now you'll see it has added a route for it. And this route will now be injected to my client. So if I go on to my command prompt, what I could do is I could do a route print and let's just print a route for 192.168.50.0. And there I can see I'm actually learning a route and it says to get there, you will use 172.280.1. This is so cool guys. Let's see, can I ping 192.168.50.1? I can ping that and that is via our tunnel or our connection via zero tier. This is really interesting and cool stuff. Like you can build such a complex overlay network with this. This is amazing. And I'm looking forward to see this become more accessible via different packages or different models of routers. And I'm actually hopeful to see version seven come out sooner now because of stuff like the zero tier. Because as you can see, there's a bunch of cool stuff that you can do here. It's not just um, so devices can just talk to each other. It's It's like, having this massive, cool, big switch, the switch of the planet connecting so that all your devices can just start communicating. All right, I'm going to end off the lesson here. Uh, I just quickly wanted to show you how to set up the zero tier, how to add a MicroTik, how to add a PC, and how you can access your MicroTik remotely then via your zero tier interface. And I'd like to thank everybody that's been supporting the channel on Patreon. And as a YouTube member, you guys have been helping me and supporting so much in ways that I can better the channel. So anyways, guys, see you in the next video. Have fun. Have a great day. Bye.